<laughs> so what you're joining is a lunch and learn. We're going to take about the next hour. However, we're going to leave enough time for um, questions at the end. Um, but over the next hour, we're going to talk about video interviewing, something that is becoming incredibly important to all of us, um, particularly with the coronavirus pandemic um, driving a lot of video interaction. So this morning, um, Mark and I are going to uh, present the event and Mark, um, we're ready I, for the next slide. I am. And All right. So, I have closed caption coming on. So it looks like closed captioning is showing my words right now. Hopefully Google will catch up with Irene. Okay. All right. Uh, oops. Let's go here. So at, we're calling ourselves Asheville 50 plus works, but um, that is under the umbrella of the Experienced Workforce Initiative of Western North Carolina. And you can subscribe to the work we're doing by going to the website that you see posted there, www.ewiwnc.com. Um, our initiative is comprised of a number of different agencies and individuals interested in um, supporting and promoting the engagement of adults who are age 50 plus in the workforce continuum. So that means between from anywhere from volunteer work to stipend based earnings um, to full and part time uh, employment. And uh, we've been doing a number of things over the last year or so. I think we've been in existence about two years. Um, and, uh, but recently we've developed some lunch and learns and we're moving to a virtual format because we are in a virtual world these days. So let me introduce myself. Mark, if you could go to the next slide, please. My name's Irene Canavet and I work at NC Works Career Center in downtown Asheville. Um, I specialize in assisting people ages 50 plus to obtain meaningful and paid work. Um, and Mark, could you introduce yourself, please? Certainly. Thank you, Irene. I, I like that word, meaningful work. And meaningful work comes in many different capacities. My meaningful work, Mark Sarnacki, uh, my title has been coined a HIT, H-I-T, or a Holistic Information Tech uh, with technology and job uh, and volunteer experiences, including Asheville Buncombe Technical Community College here in Asheville, UNCA Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, or OLLI. I'm a board member of the technology uh, networking group called Meet the Geeks, as well as our Inpatient Advocacy Training Institute. And most recently, uh, as part of the University of North Carolina Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, a support Western North Carolina broadband project. And so Mark, um, I thought what we would do is start with the HR perspective um, about, you know, why do we have virtual interviewing and where is that all going to? And we're going to have a conversation today um, so if you have any questions in the audience along the way, please put them into the chat line because we want to make sure that we um, cover that off for you by the end of the presentation. So let's start by looking at what is a virtual interview. That's, it covers a lot of different things. It can be um, through a computer, it can be on a tablet. A lot of people only have a phone available and you can do a virtual interview by phone. Um, all of them are done remotely. And through that remote um, process, video conferencing technology and other online communication methods are used. Uh -huh. Very good, um, And, and what, what are the uh, virtual interview tools? 
You know, that's so interesting, Mark, because things have changed so much over the last few years. I think people think that virtual interviewing is brand new. However, it's not. Um, I worked for the city of Asheville a number of years ago. And at that time, I want to say it was 2014. And they were starting um, to do Skype interviewing at that time. And Skype was the flavor of the day. But now um, only about 12% of employers are using Skype. 43% of employers are using Zoom, but there's also Google Meets or Hangouts um, that, that as you can see from the statistics on the slide, they say that's about 19% of employers. There are other options as well, like Microsoft Teams or something called Cisco WebEx that some of you might be familiar with. I don't know it at all. And then there's a variety of others, um, including FaceTime. I, you can even use FaceTime to do a virtual interview. And Irene, how, how have virtual interviews changed? Well, um, if we could go to the next slide, thank you. Um, it's, um, in 2012, six out of 10 companies were using some kind of video method. So I guess really the city fit into that, uh, that statistic. Um, but then in, um, by 2018, 62% of larger organizations, that is organizations with a thousand or more workers were using some type of video interviewing and 32% of smaller employers or organizations were also using video um, processes to do interviewing. Um, and um, I, I can only hazard a guess. I'd say it's probably, I don't know, what do you think, Mark? Probably up in the 90 to 100% now. I mean, just about everybody is using some kind of video conferencing for everything. Agreed, agreed, Irene. I, I think you're absolutely correct, but I'm curious to know, why should we use virtual interviews? Well, there's several reasons, and this is why they've become so popular. The first thing is, it saves time. If you have a busy, particularly a large organization where you have to bring several people together in one spot to do an interview, it's much easier to do an interview um, through video conferencing. Um, also for the job applicant, because they don't have to schedule a specific time away from their current employment if they're already employed. They can go online a few minutes ahead of time and be prepared and do it quite easily. It also um, serves, um, it saves money, you know, at one point, people used to fly people across the country or job applicants would have to get in the car and drive someplace. Just there's a simple cost savings. It's really more convenient as well. Um, if everybody can't attend the interview at the same time, or if an HR person wants to show a manager an interview, they usually have a video recording that they can look at after the fact. Or if they've interviewed several people in a day and they can't recall how somebody responded to something or they want more detail, they can go back and check the video transcript. Um, and so there's a lot of, um, they also say, I, I read something that says it is actually more personal that seems like an oxymoron, but you, it, there is a sort of a personal aspect to, um, you know, being in somebody's home office, for example, you feel a little more comfortable. And some HR people feel they get to know the individuals a little better. So there's a lot of reasons why it was growing in popularity. Also, the last um, item I have listed here is that it gives you more access to more potential employees. It's more global. So um, that also brings people into video interviewing. But I think the big thing these days is because of social distancing, it's a healthier and very much safer way to interview people, both for the 
um, HR people, but also for the job applicants. And Irene, what are the virtual interview formats? Well, um, most of us are familiar with um, the one-on-one -on -one interview where you have a conversation with re a recruiter. For a long time, recruiters have done what they call screening interviews by phone, where they have a short conversation with people one-on-one -on -one to get to know them. Well, this is the same sort of thing, except it's done often through a video format. You can have a, a panel interview as well, um, you know, with several people asking questions. That's really no different to the traditional format other than it's done virtually, but it's the same kind of interview where several people are involved in the interview process. Something that's relatively new, um, in, my, in part of my life, I teach human resource professionals who are preparing to take a, a challenge exam to become certified, and I teach recruitment and selection. And something that I'm hearing is increasing in popularity is a pre-recorded video of the applicant answering specific questions. So what happens is the HR person will send an email to the applicant and they go online and they answer a series of questions. Some of them allow them to rework the questions. If they don't like their first video, they can go back and re-record. Some of them don't, but the end result is that they send that off to the HR professional who gets to look at it in their leisure and really dig in deep to see how that person has answered the questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good. Very good, Irene. And uh, l last week, I even had a virtual interview myself. Can you give me some tips on how to ha get an edge using a competitive edge using a virtual interview? Well, they're the standard things. Prepare for the questions, you know, know about behavioral interview questions, know what you bring to the table that matches what the employer needs. Dress accordingly. One of my favorite stories, Mark, has to do with one of my HR people that I was training who told me she was involved with a virtual interview with somebody. This was by Skype and it was a number of years ago and they got heavily into the conversation and partway through, the applicant said, oh, just a moment, I have a book on my bookshelf about that. And they stood up. And the audience discovered that the person was dressed really appropriately from the waist up, but not necessarily from the waist down. So you want to prepare as if you're going into <laughs> that interview. <laughs> it was a very awkward moment for everybody. You want to be sure to prepare um, ahead of time to make sure that, um, that you're dressed for any eventuality. Also be ready um, visually. That's something that you don't need to think about in an in-person interview, but it's really important in this type of interview. And I know Mark, you're gonna go into more detail about that later on, but you know, something as simple as lighting can make a big difference. This is just a desk lamp, but I find it makes a huge difference, but you'll talk about that later, I know. And the other thing I know that you're going to talk about and I'm looking forward to is understanding the technology. Know what will be used and understand how to use it. Oh gosh, you are so correct. And my title is a holistic information tech. So when we talk about technology, we have to take a deep breath. Breathe in and breathe out because technology certainly can create some anxiety. Um, ultimately, my tips are boiled up to two uh, points being you have to plan your hardware. And for those of us that are participating in this meeting, Irene and, and myself, we both know we had some hiccups along the way and um, it, it's part of a learning experience. And sometimes you have to stop and take a deep breath, pause and wait and move forward. So Irene, what I've tried to do is just uh, point out some key things in regards to hardware and soft software for preparing for your human resource, HR, technology, um, virtual interview. 
And um, ultimately, technology, uh, especially with the hardware and software, boils up to the video component and the audio component. Part of the reason I, I like this slide, Irene, is, you know, we've lived in a, uh, over the years with technology bouncing along, but to your point, uh, COVID came around and all of a sudden we're having to do things different and the virtual interviews with the human resource officers out there is a uh, part of it, so. So Mark, what's so important about the video and the audio aspect? Okay, and, and for those of us that are participating in this meeting, immediately you start to see the emphasis on the hardware component of using sound or the audio component, and then the imagery, which is the video component, as seen in, with this individual uh, doing a virtual interview with what appears to be a team of uh, likely HR individuals. And maybe we could move, yes. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. When we talk about hardware and software, in the world of virtual conferencing, uh, hardware can be uh, likely a desktop computer, desktop computer being uh, having a web camera and a microphone. It could be a laptop, it could be a smartphone, it could be a tablet, it could be a combination of the two where I anticipate using my laptop, but as a backup, I'm going to know that I have my smartphone available. Uh, both uh, laptops and smartphones and tablets will require some variation of software. May it uh, be what Irene talked about earlier, the Zoom is probably the most common one. It's what we're using right now during this platform. Google Meet, uh, Skype, GoToMeetings, FaceTime, Google Duo. On uh, my smartphone, I actually have to download these apps. On my laptop, I definitely want to do a test and make sure that they are configured. Oh gosh, Mark, can you tell me more about this? Because this sounds, you know, involved. <laughs> it, 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 Irene, you're correct. Uh, a laptop uh, we like because it has a web camera built in, it has a microphone, it has speakers. Um, I'm actually working with two laptops right now, and uh, I have a laptop that's six years old and one that's newer, and I have learned that although it has a web camera built in, uh, I'm actually using an external webcam for newer technology, giving me high definition, and uh, Irene knows in my previous meetings, on my old laptop, I, I didn't look so bright. I wasn't so polished looking. I'm using a, a headset, and this right here is a microphone built into my headset, and um, the speakers are built into uh, my earpiece, and I'm in a, a public co-working space, so I like to ensure that the combination of my microphone and speakers is optimized for my virtual interview. You know, Mark, um, I alluded to it a little earlier, but yeah, I was hoping you would tell us a little more about some of the other options. Mm -hmm. Yes, Irene, you're, you're right. The other options is, is likely to be a smartphone. And the beauty of a smartphone is um, the web camera is built into the device. The microphone is built into the device. Uh, the speakers could be on the bottom or on the side. And even with the smartphone, I have learned that I like to have an external microphone earpiece as a backup for a potential virtual interview. And so what can you tell us about the, you know, the software? Irene, uh, if it's on a desktop, uh, through it, it's likely your virtual interview will be through a web browser. Um, but even on a mobile device, you may get prompted for an initial permission of accessing uh, a couple of privacy tools, the privacy being the camera and the microphone. And depending on the device you use, you will be prompted uh, for, during a Zoom conference. Um, can the Zoom have access to your camera? Can Zoom have access to your microphone? and that permission should be saved. And then the other portion is likely to be what's called a client software download. Uh, Zoom on a 
Mac environment or a Windows environment will download a client. And that client version is intended to give you more robust experiences and features. And it's commonly seen with Skype and Google Meet. Um, again, if it's on a mobile device, on a tablet or a smartphone, um, the software would need to be downloaded from the appropriate resource. So Mark, well, I see you're covering that because I think it's really important. Once you've caught this, what do you do with it? Oh, absolutely. Our, our ping pong balls growing across here, the big ping pong ball is that we do need to practice with your hardware and software. So I'm so happy that we have several joining us today and that the several um, that are joining us, I got a couple new folks coming in right now and I apologize. I didn't see you here to the side, but ultimately um, your hardware and software experience um, requires that you do some practicing and congratulations to the folks that are here with us today because you are practicing with Zoom and are likely to have uh, some unique experience or comments that you can share with us at the end of this presentation. Yeah, you know, Mark, I was wondering about that because there's so many different formats that different employers use. I'm wondering, are all the software programs, do they offer the same capabilities or are they different? Can you tell us about that? Uh, Irene, that's a great question. Generally, they, they are very, very similar and um, the, there, there are different components. So as a rule of thumb, uh, I want to raise my hand and approach that HR contact and say, I have an interview coming up, what software will be used for that conference? Um, and that uh, HR individual will likely respond with, uh, well, Mark, we're going to use Microsoft Teams. Ooh, wait a minute. I am a little experienced in using uh, Zoom. So as a result, I want to anticipate for using that platform uh, that will be used for a virtual interview. And then um, as a contingency, oh my gosh, we live in Western North Carolina and broadband speeds can be an issue. And um, the reality is using video conferencing uh, is consuming a tremendous amount of broadband uh, for your internet speeds. If, if my video is dropping, if it's getting choppy, the software will try and optimize the audio, knowing that the audio is the number one most important thing. So again, going back to that HR individual and saying, hey, HR individual, in the worst case scenario, if, if my, my video fails because I live uh, way, way in Western North Carolina, may I do an audio only interview? And you can make a virtual interview audio only through Zoom, through uh, Microsoft Teams, through uh, Google Meet, and as a contingency, having a phone number. If, if ultimately it backs up, even Zoom provides a telephone number as a contingency for um, that uh, optimization of the audio. So this slide talks about um, if you're in dial-in or slow internet, shutting off your video or muting your video will help your audio experience. And these audio only options are available again through Zoom, Google Meet, Skype, FaceTime, WhatsApp. There are many of them. Um, Mark. Do you have other suggestions for um, for working with a cell phone? I see that you had a cell phone on that last slide. Yes, absolutely. With a cell phone and even with a laptop, um, you want to invite a friend or a family. You, you, you know you're going to use a laptop. You know you're going to use a smartphone. You have the, the software prepared. You're, you're now ready to practice. Your, with your hardware and software, uh, find a friend, find a family member that will allow you to practice with your hardware and video conference software. And um, what what should you focus on when you practice? Um, we we talked about a couple. We talked about um, the fact that the lighting is important. I sh shifted my light off and on, but mm -hmm. are there other things you should think about? Absolutely. So I'm going to drill a little bit deeper on the top topic of audio muting and video muting. So in this specific screenshot, 
Uh, this is the Zoom software and most of us are muted and we can see the microphone with the red slash indicating it is muted. And if you hover over some of these tools, um, sometimes they'll give you a little bit of a hint. In this case, on a laptop, you can actually unmute uh, the audio with a, a Alt-A in a Windows environment, or even simply press and hold the space bar to temporarily unmute. That's a pretty powerful feature with Zoom. And uh, here's some screenshots. Uh, this is an actual virtual interview uh, I was in. And it's kind of busy, but what I'm trying to demonstrate is when, when I shut off my video and I can actually do that, um, my avatar for that, that software will actually appear. That avatar is uh, gonna be your picture or your name and you wanna make sure it looks as professional as possible. So in, the, in this example, this individual in this webinar, she uh, muted her video and her avatar, her profile for Zoom appeared while the interview continued. If you don't have an image or a profile, it's likely in the case of Zoom, it will just put a name. And I, I've, I've blurred out these uh, names in here just uh, in the sensitivity of, of, of the folks that were participating in this particular conference. Yes, but I like this one, this slide, because it does show exactly how that happens when it's your particular. Um, yep. You're right, Irene, and, and uh, the screenshot that I'm sharing with you right now is the Zoom app on a mobile phone, and I changed the orientation of my phone from portrait to landscape, and you can see on the Zoom app on my iPhone in this case, I have it currently muted. I have it currently, uh, the, the video shut off, so my avatar picture appears. Um, sometimes that's a strategy that if your broadband is weak or poor, um, sh absolutely shutting off your, your video will immediately improve the audio. And then uh, if there were a dog back in the background or uh, other audio, I would want to be proficient in um, muting my audio uh, with the particular app. Before we go farther, Mark, um, one thing that you brought kind of brought up to me, I have a friend that I FaceTime with all the time and she frequently uses her cell phone. And when she does, I get a little seasick because she tends to have it in her hand and move it around. Um, and that can cause a problem. Do you have suggestions how if somebody's using a phone, they I can minimize do. that? I certainly do. My, my friend Karen is on the conference call with us and Karen and I uh, went to Amazon and we actually purchased a, a, uh, a stand so that when I'm on a virtual interview using my phone or my tablet, the stand holds it very, very steady. It allows the power to be connected and minimize that awkwardness of what you just referenced. Um, and Irene, on the topic of broadband, we live in Western North Carolina and it's sometimes hard for people to find adequate uh, locations for connecting to the Wi-Fi. And our partners at the Land of Sky, LOS, have created a website, www.loswifilot.org, and it, it's an interactive map that shows you Wi-Fi hotspots where you can drive your vehicle up and there should be sufficient broadband to connect for things like a virtual interview or doing homework or filling out a job application. Yeah, I know that I've seen that map before, Mark, um, but it doesn't include NC Works, but actually NC Works Career Center expanded its Wi-Fi so somebody can do the same thing. If they get to 48 Grove Street, they can work from their car if they want, um, or they can come into the, um, into the center. And one of the things I'm thrilled to talk about is the fact that um, they've now opened up uh, some virtual interviewing workstations at NC Works in the, uh, because many people we know don't have the technology, but you can access a couple of different workstations and set up an interview with an employer. Um, so, they have three of them. 
I mean, how, how do they how do they um, go about making arrangements to use they it? They call, and I've got the phone number on the screen. It's 828-251-6200. They could schedule both a practice session and the actual interview itself. I would certainly recommend they do something ahead of time to make sure they understand how to use the technology. There are people there that could probably help them, but you don't want to be doing that at the very last minute. So um, it's at the NC Works Career Center in Asheville. I know about our center. I don't know about other NC Works Career Centers around the state, but our center has the three workstations and you can, um, there are spots available from the 15th on. I know that they're booked this, this week. Nice, nice. That's a, a wonderful resource. And, and uh, 48 Grove Street is in downtown Asheville. It's actually right down the road from the federal building. So it's uh, the proximity is there. So uh, and actually, Mark, I believe it's the 20th on I checked yesterday. I apologize. I think it's July 20th on you can book a time. And Irene, I stumbled across this uh, summary from, it's actually from NC Works, the North Carolina Department of Commerce. It's an image file that summarizes everything that we have talked about for the last half hour or so. So Irene and I are going to quickly go through this, um, starting with the, the first block there. Irene. Well, I can't emphasize it enough, Mark. You know, it's great to come to the table, but if you don't have the content, you're really all this preparation and you really don't, you know, it can, you can really lose it if you can't ex, um, answer the best interview questions. So be sure that you include that in your preparation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and the, the, the job application details itself are a great place to develop those questions and, uh, and have that prepared. So as I and saw there are the, workshops available at various places to help you prepare those as well. Yeah. And another thing is to make sure the surroundings are neat and clean. Um, we've and all two, had, a, do you want to speak to that? Well, your two pictures that you provided from NC Works, what, you know, many of us may have broadband available, but maybe the, uh, the place in our home isn't appropriate because of children or pets or animals or other. And, uh, uh, NC Works, you definitely have a very neat and clean place to facilitate that virtual interview. And it looks business-like. Sometimes I find people get busy backgrounds and you want the focus to be on you, not on the background. So make sure you choose the background that where it's it shows professionally and so that the audience is focused on you. Yep, yep. And this is uh, my, my point. I just want to reiterate, test all technology, folks. I can't tell you, um, I, I'm technology driven. And whenever I connect something, even for today's meeting, yeah. I failed to connect my, my uh, adapter for providing power for my, my laptop. And it was running out of battery juice while I was preparing for this interview. So um, make a checklist, prepare uh, beforehand. If you're doing a portable uh, iPhone or tablet, even have a backup battery uh, as a contingency if you're using one of the Land of Sky Wi-Fi uh, lots, um, you want to anticip anticipate that power need. Irene, you, you did a great demonstration just a moment ago about lighting. I have a, actually a portable lighting tool here myself and you can see how lighting with this portable device can definitely enhance or make make the experience worse. I, um, I apologize, Mark. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I like that because it doesn't um, reflect off your glasses. If you wear glasses, look carefully at your glasses to see whether something odd is going on with reflections. Yep, yep. And, and Irene, sometimes people will set up a web camera with a window of sunlight behind them and uh, it's very similar to the screen picture I have here. Uh, the video focused and enhanced the lighting for the television, but it, it made my lighting very, very poor for my face. 
recording is just another easy trick. Our, our mobile devices, our, our tablets are just another wonderful tool to turn on the camera, um, reverse the camera so it's front facing and just practice recording. Very simple step. Oh yes, uh, hopefully you'll remember my anecdote about this one because you really <laughs> want to dress nicely from head to toe. I did not prepare this screen. This comes from a separate site, but I do know how important it is. <laughs> Irene, limiting distractions. It's, um, I was on a conference call yesterday actually and the, the individual had uh, I think four brothers and sisters and she said when I do my my video conferencing my virtual interviews she actually goes to her car because she knows the importance of not having distractions and those distractions can be definitely be pets children television or sounds in the background I actually put a sign on the door of my office to let people know that not to come flying in in the middle of a recording and I hope your dog is able to read that song. Oh, right? I wish he could, but he's outside <laughs> now. Because <laughs> okay. when we were practicing before this event, Mark could, uh, definitely knows I have a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a, just a basic thing, this uh, having your resume in front of you. And Irene, you made a comment earlier. You had a little uh, uh, accessory that, that yeah. helps you. I tried posting it on the back of my, on the wall behind my laptop because I thought that might be helpful, but that didn't work as well as actually old school, just a, an old stand I had in the house. Um, that has helped me with today's presentation. What, what the reason it helps is because you don't want to have your head down too often looking down at your notes. It's better to stare into the, the camera if you can. So, um, having your notes posted behind you is something that's a benefit with virtual interviewing um, that you don't always get in a one-on-one -on -one type of interview but allows you to access information quickly and effectively yep yep and your resume has those details that you want to use as an outline for your yeah. virtual job interview so uh, virt uh, virtual interviews using professional body language i'm going to sit upright and then show kind of like a hunch look myself. And you can see that if I'm sensitive to having a comfortable chair, sitting upright, um, uh, projecting my, my shoulders a little bit forward, that body language can be another secret to having an effective virtual interview with an HR representative. You're right, Mark. Uh, leaning forward a little bit shows that you're engaged and it works whether you're in an in-person interview or whether you're doing something virtually. So remember that. All right, Irene, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a live demonstration. I'm not muting my audio right now and I have my coffee at hand. It's still early in the morning, so. <laughs> All right, I'm sure that didn't sound very good. Probably wasn't very professional. And it is an example of what you don't want to do during an interview. Um, I do like to have a bottle of water at hand. And this is where I practice muting my video and my audio absolutely to make sure there aren't those ugly sounds occurring during a virtual interview. And you might ask the HR person if they mind if you have a bottle of water. It's a very professional and business way of handling that. But we often get dry when we're in a stressful situation. So it's nice to have something close by. Yep, yep, yep. And um, my caffeine sometimes gives me extra enthusiasm in the morning. But that <laughs> enthusiastic attitude is a basic element that when I'm speaking with an HR manager, we want to be as positive as possible. And Irene, do you want to talk about the last tip in this image? Um, I'm not seeing a last tip on this image. Maybe it's under my, um, there it is. Oh, my big thing. Follow up with a thank you. Thank you. You know what happened here, Mark? It's so easy to do. I have everybody's headshots on my screen and it was over on the right side of the screen so it was blocking the follow-up icon but really you it's the least used and one of the most effective ways to keep yourself in front of an hr person it shows you're polite 
It shows you're organized and it gives you a chance to emphasize the key things that took place during the interview, the things that resonated. So um, I highly recommend it. So the awesome part is we'll, we'll, we'll provide a link to this, um, to this presentation. And this is one of my favorite slides is a great checklist for all of us to do. And uh, Irene and I, we kind of brainstormed and thought, well, um, there are some additional resources that are, uh, need to be reiterated. Uh, technology resources, if you want more information about Zoom, uh, there is actually out of Raleigh, North Carolina, Goodwill Community Foundation, GCF Global has free online learning. It doesn't have advertisements. Um, there are other technology learning uh, tutorials in there that are very helpful. I'm a big fan of lynda.com. Uh, using your library card here in Buncombe County, you can get free access to Linda and polish up some skills for, for a virtual interview. Um, NC Works, again, Irene mentioned the availability of those very professional video conference rooms, as well as um, the availability of a Wi-Fi lot, being able to drive, drive up not only to NC Works, but several locations in Buncombe County, referencing the Land of Sky Wi-Fi lot.org website. Um, I have more, more tips and uh, information on a Google site I've created for you. That'll be part of this um, follow-up fr from this. And the totally awesome part is we, we have several here, Allie, Jack, Karen, um, Phil, are parts of our EWI team and we want to extend to anybody that's seeing this video the opportunity to practice your virtual conference with whatever tool you would like. Um, I do encourage you as part of that practice experience is to actually run a speed test because of the dependency of broadband on your specific um, environment. So Irene, we're, we're just about uh, 40 minutes into the uh, presentation. And I am going to um, allow our, our, our team that's here to have some open dialogue and questions and comments about the presentation. Right. Well, Mark, before we go too far into what's coming up next in our next Lunch and Learn, we did get a question from Nancy asking, with thank you notes, do you follow up in um, by email or with a handwritten note? And these days, I would say the majority of people follow up by email. It's certainly okay to follow up with a handwritten note, and we used to say you should. However, these days it's just as acceptable to uh, use a, an email to follow up. Um, try and get, if you're in an in-person interview, I think it's a little easier to get business cards and the correct spelling of people's names make sure whatever you do that you proof it to make sure you're sending it to the the correct spelling and the correct name my full name's Catherine irene and i always know if somebody knows me because if they send it to Catherine, i know that they're not really aware of who i am so make sure you get the right name and um you could send it if it's a panel interview send it to the lead interviewer plus the rest of the interview team. Um, but definitely do it and do it as soon as possible after the, um, after the interview. If you have questions about this, NC Works has several resources to help you know how to develop a good thank you note. And you can follow up with us. Yep, very good, very good. And we do want to mention uh, Experience Workforce Initiative Asheville 50 Plus Works is anticipating doing some more lunch and learn experiences. The next topic will be the good, the bad, the ugly. But we're going to have hands on dialogue with uh, folks that uh, we're going to share some tips and tricks on that. I think they're actually going to show us uh, in by video um, examples of the good, the bad and the ugly. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll see some acting skill with some of our experienced worker and um, initiative members. So that'll okay. be great. Fantastic. So uh, this is uh, the last slide. Again, I want to reiterate 
Um, www.ewiwnc.com is our website. We are an age-friendly Buncombe County partner. We would love for you to um, uh, join our mailing list. And with that being said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we're going to go and open up this um, presentation to some dialogue with the folks that are here. And um, I, I know I'm, I would like to start off with uh, Ali, you, your name has been mentioned a few times. Uh, do you have any questions or comments that you want to add to our presentation? And we'll just kind of go around the room for everybody here. Thanks, Mark. Um, terrific presentation, Mark and Irene, really um, very informative. So thank you for that. I just wanted to share a couple of things that have come out of the chat box. Um, earlier on when Irene was speaking about the um, benefits of doing interviewing online, um, Jack Henry mentioned uh, some additional benefits, which are it can save money on providing snacks and meals and can save paper as well. So those are two other um, uh, perks or pluses for online interviewing or virtual interviewing. Um, and then Karen Wolfram has a question that I'm wondering if one of you can address. Is Google Meet a more stable platform? What's your experience in using this in Western North Carolina? That definitely sounds like a technology question that I, I would love to answer just because um, through uh, Asheville Score, I specialize in Google tool sets. Google got caught. Um, when COVID came in, their Hangouts, they were in a transition from Hangouts to Meet and um, their tool wasn't ready. And it just so happened Zoom had all of the features, all of the bells and whistles. Um, I actually do combinations of Zoom and Hangouts. And as a rule of thumb, interestingly, I have found Google to be slightly better only because I believe the data center is in Lenore, North Carolina. So I don't know where the Zoom uh, servers are, but I'm guessing it's not the close proximity of the Google servers in Lenore. And as a result, the experience on Google is slightly better. Uh, some of the, uh, the folks with Land of Sky have mentioned they prefer Teams. I think it's a preference. I don't know about you know the bandwidth thing, but again, the takeaway is that if you run a speed test, that will give you an analytical view of you know how your uh, internet speed is doing and um, the FCC defines high speed, 25 megabits down, three megabits up. And um, that definitely has a correlation to your experience of a virtual interview. Did that answer your question somewhat? Can I share as well, Mark? Yes. This is Jack Henry from the city of Asheville. I'm a talent acquisition consultant. I've been doing all of our um, interviews virtually for the last couple months. Thank you for joining um, us, we, Jack. Yeah, we, we use uh, Google Hangouts chat for our virtual interviews. Um, and one downside I see is um, they don't have the ability to have uh, the gallery view or the Brady Bunch view where you see the boxes of everyone's face at the same time, which, which would mirror kind of an in-person interview. Yeah. Instead, it it toggles between one face, whoever's speaking, which can be a little bit disorienting for um, the interviewee. And there is a plugin um, that you can add that um, is not without its problems. So um, I would say Zoom is better if you have access to it, but um, there are workarounds if the organization will only use one um, platform. Great, great response. Thank you, Jack. And we have several other experienced workforce initiative members with us. Um, Karen, do, do you have any comments or uh, experiences? So Mark, that... I don't know if you... I'm sorry, all right. Mark, I think she posted a question actually. Um, right, can you please wonderful. explain what 25 down and five down is? Five up. Yes, five up. okay, Karen, I just unmuted you. A great question. And um, those are numbers uh, in which you normally don't hear as part of your, your dialogue, but uh, the, the ability to do a virtual interview requires high-speed internet. High-speed internet requires bandwidth, and bandwidth is measured in megabits per second, M MBS. And um, the FCC, again, considers uh, high-speed as having at least 25 down and three up, but in the world of our working from home, 
uh, having more uh, bandwidth or megabits per second available to upload has become more relevant for doing virtual interviews. And Karen, that's a, a great example of sometimes um, people will find that their Wi-Fi, their home broadband is insufficient and that if they go to their mobile device and turn on their cellular data and use their cellular connection, they may actually have a better virtual experience because of that speed. So great question, Karen, thank you. Mark, can you also talk about the speed test so people can understand how to do that, please? Yes, uh, speed, the speed test itself, if I'm on a laptop, I would go to speedtest.net is one by UCLA. Um, Western North Carolina Broadband.org also has a speed test. They're all similar. Um, those are great for working on a laptop or a desktop and a web browser. I would actually show it to you right now, but because I'm running multiple applications and I'm in an environment where others are using the broadband, it wouldn't be a good time to do uh, a, a real live demo of a speed test. And then on, on a phone itself, you can download uh, an Ookla speed test app. And on the speed test app, this is Ookla's, um, I'm actually doing it on my cell phone and you'll see like a speedometer and I have the benefit of working at a co-working space. Very, very good speed down, very, very good speed up. That gives me the confidence of knowing that my virtual interview at this location will be very good because it far exceeds the, um, the, the high speed broadband uh, requirement. I actually have 55 megabits down, 55 up. I, you can see why my video and audio is coming through to you very, very well. So thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Phil, you, you, you're in the library now. You, you are the resourceful individual with a, a whole lot of literature, so. Phil is also a member of our Experience Workforce Initiative. I have no doubt you have experienced a lot of interviews yourself. Yeah, as the, uh, before I retired, I was the Deputy Director of Human Resources for the National Institutes of Health. <clears throat> and um, we did some virtual, especially if you had folks coming from across the country uh, at the high level positions, we always flew them in. I became a personally a big fan of the handwritten thank you note. Um, I don't know how that works for the younger generation HR folks, but I was always impressed with somebody who, who would take who the, took time, the time. Yeah, yeah, took the time to handwrite a note and found actually um, when I would send handwritten thank you notes to people on it, we had a, a, about 400 people in our HR office. If I would send a, a handwritten thank you note and then walked around, I'd occasionally see notes that I had written on people's boards. So, and mm -hmm. mostly younger people. So I think, um, uh, um, you know, the, the email thank you is nice. The handwritten thank you is somebody made a little extra effort. So I, I, I feel uh, that's a I good think, way to go. I think it's great if somebody can do a handwritten thank you. And Phil, I'd like to also congratulate you. Your audio sounds good. I, I can notably hear um, with your headset, with your microphone piece, Karen, likewise, she has an earpiece and a, a microphone. That microphone is being consistently held between your, your, your voice, your audio. And as a result, uh, the people that are hearing you will have a better experience using an external Thank headset. Thank you, no, Phil, but I think you would... So we are coming to a one o'clock. I want to thank everybody for joining us here. It has been fantastic and we appreciate you being part of our inaugural um, Experience Workforce Initiative webinar. Uh, we hope that you have learned some things. You've helped teach me myself with technology. So thank you and we appreciate your, your time today. Bye bye, everybody. Have a, a wonderful Thank day. Thank you so much. Thanks, really Mark. Thanks, Irene. Thank you all.